This video is brought to you by Make It Simple TT, the premier online learning space for CXE IT and computer science classes in the Caribbean. All our classes are run on the familiar and secure Google Classroom platform. The weekly videos are well laid out and labeled by topic, dated, and placed in reverse chronological order to ensure easy access even if you miss a class. To register, head over to our website at makeitsimplett.com forward slash register, or you can WhatsApp 1-868-308-8799. All right, so we're looking at the webpage design for the Twin Bar Jam, the AKA the Elections SBA, and there's a question here, right? The Commission has requested that the design a web page to provide the public with general information about the election. The web page should include the following the Commission logo, display the information about the elections, for example, the total votes received by each party, and the number of votes cast in each constituency, links to the Commission's email address, and a web page which displays past election data results. This page may or may not exist. And that's all you have to do. Now, the mark scheme for a um, for the web page is this. This is the mark scheme. You have to include graphics and text. You have to use appropriate text. So appropriate use of text, that basically means like, you know, put the correct words or something like that. Um, then you have to use appropriate use of graphics. Then you have to use layout, a, a suitable layout intended for audience it basically means just make the thing look nice in terms of put the buttons in the correct place which i'm going to show you how to do that very easily and consistent information on the specific quote yeah like majority of information consistent with requirements that's basically what the question asks you to do did you do what the question asks you to do somewhat consistent or few if you do exactly what the question asks you to do you get those marks there and then the last part is hyperlinks you must have a link for any two of the following. So any two of these, link to another web page, which is standard, link to a location within your web page, uh, link to an email address or link to user created files. Any one of them should work, but we will just be linking to another web page and linking our email address as the easiest thing to do. So let me see how this thing is going to go. What does the syllabus recommend that you could use? Recommended software would be, um, they have, sadly, sadly, they have recommended Microsoft Word. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, like I no 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 no. Yeah, so please don't use Microsoft Word to do your website, please. See meme in question. Please. I beg of you. I beg of you. Don't. Right. Then you have free online services such as Wix.com, Webno.com, Weebly.com. So I think I have videos on how to use Wix already. And you can go and check those on the app and you can go and check those on the website. Make it simple tt.com, right? It's literally my name, make it simple And then the last one is Google Sites. Now, this is the one I'm going to be doing today because this one is by far the easiest. Google Sites, by far the easiest, most cohesive, and easiest to share without any drama. Now, the thing about the free online services like Wix and Webnode and Weebly and whatnot, those usually require you to create an account, and sometimes they will send you ads, and sometimes they'll have all sorts of different real real like professional features that you may not need even though you're basically going through the template and edit it so um sometimes students get confused in here now i'm not saying that it's not easy wix.com is dead simple if you go and check my other videos about how to build a generic website for your sba i did it in wix.com and it's dead simple but remember my job is to make it simple meaning the lowest common denominator that is what i'm looking for because if you are capable of going and use Wix.com or coding in HTML, cool, go ahead and do that. But I know it are children who's struggling out there and they just need to get a simple way to get their SBA done because they don't have time. So I'll show you the most simple way right now, which is Google Sites. So let me, um, let me, let me get this thing going now. All right, so to do Google Sites, your first job is to 
go on your web browser because everything is going to be done in your browser which is the best part of this everything is done in your browser so you don't have to download any program you don't have to do anything and you go into what your website sites.google.com right you go to sites.google.com and you get inside there and they have templates available they have all sorts of stuff available you could you could choose different ones and all that all that yeah all that jazz but what we're going to do is we're just going to click on blank the reason we can click on blank um because you want to create a blank a blank page now what it will give you by default it'll give you almost half the things that you need already it'll give you a nice layout It'll give you the ability to put pages because Google Forms, it is literally drag and drop. It just adds things that you need. So let's start, right? So the first thing that you'll see on top is page title. Now, everything in Google Sites has these little tooltips on the left hand side that come up in kind of gray. And that's where you're going to find most of your menus. But there's also this menu on the right hand side that will show you all the different things that you could put in, all the different layouts and Yada yada yada. So we're not really gonna try and overcomplicate the thing. All we're going to try to do is do what the SBA requires. So let's go to the SBA and let's see what it requires for us. Right. So it says on the spreadsheets. Where is it? We did all that already. Database, all and thing. Yeah. Yes. So you can check all the other videos. I have the description the link and it will be in the description, right? So they want Trent Bajami, Elections Commissioner, and has requested that the designer web page to provide blah, 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 blah. It should have the commission's logo. So let's start. Logo. Our logo is a picture. Now, because you would have done the letterhead before with the, um, with the word processing, if you have the letterhead done, you would have been able to create a logo somehow, or the fillable form, you would have created a logo. But let me say you didn't create a logo, a logo yet, right? What we want to do is we want to put our logo up here. Now, this this thing's so cool. Because when you go at the top right hand side here, you'll see enter site name, right? So we're going to enter site name as Trin Bajam. Elections Info. Cool. We do that. Trin Bajam Elections Info. That's the name. Then you're going to go, when you, when you hover by it, you'll see add logo. When you click add logo, this Google so, so smart. They'll just be like, Oh, let's find a logo. So we're going to click select. And you're going to get this thing. Find Google Drive or image search or whatnot. So let's go to image search. And I am going to search for images. So I'm going to search for elections. I think I use one of these pictures before right so this is the picture i think i use any microsoft Word, right so i'm gonna click here campaign and elections and click insert and tad ah i've put in a logo watch it there's a logo so this is our mark this is a there's a mark one time if you look carefully it says the commission's logo so the web page should include the following commission's logo we already met one of the requirements which is there's a logo up here but of course if i want to make it bigger and i want to make it clear i could change the image of this background where you see page title so you could put page title and name this title um home page whatever you could name it something that's smarter click change image and you could choose select image again and we're going to look for the same Search again and we search for elections. So I'm going to show you all that you could put in the same. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on, Google, don't fail me now. I should be able to find back here. That same. No? I pass it? Did I? I don't care. Doesn't matter. Alright, so let's say we're using this picture here. Vote. I click select. You could upload your own picture, of course. Alright. So now I have a picture in, as a background and I have the words home page. Home page now looking too, too, too good at that size, so I'm going to make it bold. And all right, good. So now I have a page there with home page. 
So I've already met the requirements of putting in the commission's logo. Whether you want to put the logo in big or you want to put the logo in small, doesn't matter. Marks is marks, and you take any marks, right? Um, next, let's go again and see what they require. They require us to they require us to display information about the elections, for example, the total votes received by each party and the number of votes cast in each constituency. So this is so perfect because I would have done this in the spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to the spreadsheet that I did this in. All right, here, look, I have it here. So if I copy this, let's say I copy all this data here. And I go back to my site, which is here. <clears throat> and I choose text, right? So I put in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click text box. And it will put in a text box here. And then I just go and click paste. What happened? Oh, that's ugly. That's really ugly. No, that's not cool. Yeah, that's down and down and down and down. Do they have a table? Table, table, table. No. All right, they don't have any table. So what you have to do is... We want to enter the information about the winners of the elections, but I have it in this table thing here. So I will try to see this other image. To get other image, what you can do is, so you have two things you could do. You could go and take this information here and you could now go and type it over inside this space here, like type the information in and you can just type 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 but that will send you crazy and i don't want to send you crazy so in so you won't have five hour later yeah you don't want to be taking a whole hour doing that so i'm going to show you how to just create an image out of anything so let's go. So I have this 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 thing here. I want to put this exact information because that is the information that I want to put. Um, was that uh, if we have to use word? Because I think our IT teacher said he wants us to use word. <laughs> no, I'm not sure you. I am, I am in no way going to encourage. So you use yeah. I'm no way going to encourage you to use Microsoft Word to do your website. Using Google's um, sites is way too easy to force somebody to use Microsoft Word. I'm not. I don't care if the syllabus ha has it. I'm not encouraging that. That is real slackness. That is real slackness. It's 2021 and you're building a website in Word. Anyhow, want to use the, um, want to use the snipping tool. Right, snip and tool, you just go to snip and sketch. So you press this uh, Windows key and press snip. You'll know how to take a screenshot, right? And you press snip and tool or snip and sketch and you could snip out the part that you want, right? Then you go and save this as a there's a shortcut here, remember you could type this all the way through. Um elections. Save it somewhere wherever you, wherever you can find it and it will save, right? Now what I want to do is I want to go on my page and type for like a heading. So I'm going to go into this spot here and put um, elections data summary. I put that in bold uh, and then I'll change it to center. I could probably change it from normal text to title. Right. So that will be there. Now underneath that I want to enter the election data summary. So I'll click images and I'll click upload. When, I, when it says upload, it will show me my desktop. I will find the elections picture I just did. And now the image is there. Now, because the image is so small, I want to make it bigger. I want to take up some more place on the screen. So I could expand it like that. Make it a little taller. Make sure it fits. So now I have the elections data inside the page. If I click on it, you will see I have options to 
um, to uncrop it. So I'll uncrop it. And then I want it to go center. Can I get it to go center? Yeah, so the image there. So if I want it to be a little more to the yeah, get, get, get a little bit here. But the point is I have the I have the information inside. There we go. Ta-da! This video is brought to you by Make It Simple TT. In every CSEC IT class, assignments are given on a weekly basis covering the topic that was taught in the class. The assignments are original questions and test the entire syllabus and model the style of questions that come in past papers. Monthly reports are also sent to parents and guardians, showing the progress of students. To register, head over to our website at makeitsimplett.com forward slash register or you can WhatsApp 1-868-308-8799. Alright, so, so I have, I, I need a page, homepage, so let's see if I met the requirements. Um, see if I met the requirements. One is I must have the commission's logo. Two, I must display information about the elections, for example, total vote received by each um, of the candidates and whatnot. So I think that is... Because, because you did the Excel and the word processing already, you literally have a table just sitting down inside of a mail merge. You could just screenshot that, turn that into an image and put it in. If you want, you could even copy and paste the text and put it inside. Doesn't matter once the text is there, meaning once the information is there. And of course, the information has to be consistent with your spreadsheet has to have the same information. Your mail merge has to have the same information. And of course, your website should have the same information too. That's not really that hard to do. Not really not that hard to do. The, the next thing now, if you look how simple this is. Um, what's called this thing? Next one. Links to the commission's email address and a web page which displays past election data. This page may or may not exist. This is all they're asking for. They're just asking for two things, which is for you to link to our email address and display past election data. You don't even have to go hard on this thing. You don't even have to put like any big set of effort. So here's what, here's, here's how simple you can do this, right? I click text box and I put in the email address and put in a fake email address, which is um, contact us, us at um, printbarjam at elections.com. So that's the email address and if I click on this email address and I highlight it and I go on and click the little insert link here, watch it, insert link, boom, it's a hyperlink, marks, like legit marks, no questions asked because we have done what the question asked for which is, it said to show a link to the commission's email address. The next thing that we have to do is our web page which displays past election data but the page doesn't even have to exist. So watch, to add a new page, if I go on the right hand side here, you will see there's a section called pages, right? So right now there's one page called home. To add a new page, I'll just go and press the little plus sign at the bottom here, add a new page. What do I want to name the page? Past elections data. Now Google Sites so nice they will automatically put the links on top here for me. So now I have home and past elections data. You don't have to hyperlink it. You don't have to. It automatically shows you here. So if I were to go on this and I click home, it will go to home page. If I click past elections data, it will go to past elections data. And the, 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 the SBA says it doesn't, it may or may not exist. So you could go and fabricate some information or you could just go and type in here, um, go by insert and then click text box and you could say um, something like information is currently, is currently not available at this point in time. And my dear friends, 
in how much time? 20 minutes. We are done. We have met the requirements. Now let's go to the marks team and see if there are any refinements that we could do to make sure that we get the marks. Because remember, I'm here to make sure that you get your marks. I want to show you exactly how the marks are going and where you're going to get them. So let's go. So let's go to the marks scheme. The marks scheme says that you should have inclusion of graphics and text. Let's check our website. Do I have graphics and text? Yes, I have a picture in the background here. I have a logo. Once you put in a logo, you get through graphics. Text, you type in some word. You get through again. And I even have an image. I get through for the third time. Appropriate use of text. Did we use the text properly? We have the title in bold. So all you want to do is change some formatting to change the bold. This one here, I changed this to title. You can click on title or you can change it from title to heading or you could change it to subheading, anything like that. But you, it, it shows I didn't just type any text, just like that, right? So let's go again. Do we have appropriate use of graphics? Appropriate use of graphics would be, did I put a background to the um, title of the homepage? Yes. Did I put the logo in the correct place? Yes. Did I put a picture inside here? Yes. You could put pictures all over, you know, because there's so many different things that you can do, so many different SBAs. So putting in pictures appropriately makes sense. But just for argument's sake, I want to make sure that the past elections data page doesn't look so bland. I'm going to put in a layout. So I'm going to go by here and click layout, right? And when I click on layout, I'm going to put in a picture to show that, okay, coming soon. So we go go by layout and we go, go to search, select image and we go to Google image search and we'll search for coming soon and I put coming soon from wherever insert and I put in the image and be like and the image might be too big so you just click on crop and it will do it like that and then you could put the data will be uploaded in the coming months so that there shows that you put in appropriate uh, appropriate picture and appropriate text. So that just makes these marks even better. Right? So follow along with me. Or they follow where I'm coming from, right? So these three marks in the bag. Inclusion of graphics and text. Appropriate use of text. Appropriate use of graphics in the bag. No questions, right? Web page um, for intended audience. Suitable layout for intended audience. Mostly suitable layout for intended audience. Now, the, the whole goal of this is the people are supposed to come and get information very easily. So now let's, let's go and look at our website. They go to the home page. They need to get the information. Is the information there easily? Yes, there's an appropriate layout. Do they have the ability to contact us at the bottom? Yes, they can click if they scroll down. And if they want to go to the next page, there is the navigation at the top. They click on navigation at the top and they get to the next page. We win. We have won. Let's go again. Consistent information on the page specific with requirements. So consistent information would be, did we get the information from our spreadsheet or our mail merge or our database? If the same names are used from each one, then it should be good. And as you can see, I went to the mail merge. I took the table that we put inside there, which I actually got from the spreadsheet and I just put it in. And that's literally consistent. And the requirements, the requirements like um the requirements are here what's the requirements what they're checking for is right this here did i meet these requirements here did i put the logo in did i display the information did i do these three things so you notice there are three points here and the mark scheme is looking for three marks ah you see that consistent requirements so once you follow what the question said to do you get the three marks there and then the last piece of cake is hyperlinks do i have a link to another web page yes i do because i have home and past elections data and it's working do i have a link to uh, another location on your web page i didn't put that in because i mean you don't have to do that because your web page sometimes if the web page is long enough you can link to jump to another spot but we don't need to make it that long because you could just put in a link to an email address. So the presence of a link for any two of the following. 
So we have LinkedIn on our web page, LinkedIn email address. Now, the link to the email address is on the home page and it's at the bottom here. Do I want this to be all bigger? Sure, I want to make it clear to the examiners that they will see it. So I just go down and change it from font size 11 to font size 36, just for argument sake. So they can clearly see. All right, if we go and click here, we'll get to the link. And now we have achieved all that is necessary. Now, the best thing about this, the best thing about Google Sites is that when you do your, when you do your website in Microsoft Word, or any local um, web development platform and you save that because you have to upload these files for the examiner to see right so you save that they're going to have to click on a file and open it up but the pictures and everything that you loaded there have to be in the same folder so when it's time to package your website it's get real hard because you have to make sure the pictures are there because when you try to open it it's not going to open properly because you did it in microsoft word but with this one google sites Here's what, here's what make it easy. You could literally go by publish and click publish, right? And you'll get this box. And you could give it a name and choose request that public search engines do not display my site because you don't want this site to be on real internet, but it will actually have a real domain name, which is HTTPS sites.google.com forward slash view forward slash wherever. So you could change it to Trinbajam elections and then put your candidate number right so your candidate number is one one six blah, 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 blah. right you pay candidate number and that is you and this is your site now when you click publish and you share this with a human being aka all you have to do is create a microsoft word document or something or a word document or a text file even put that link inside there when you submit your sba to your teacher and you upload the files all the examiner is going to have to do when it's time to check your, your, your website is to go to our normal web page, paste the link in, press enter, and this is your website that is actually on the real internet. The real internet. And I mean, this wasn't that hard that you can't teach students how to do this because even after this, a student could decide, hey, I want to create a little a website from a, from a little group for an anime site, a small business I want to do. I have a social studies SBA and I want to create a website to show it or some kind of thing that you're doing in school. This is like dead simple and the site could actually be on the internet and you could be like starting off your website development career. Whereas, if you do this thing in Microsoft Word, what are you gonna do it after? No one, literally no one if you like tell somebody like oh hey um they ask somebody you, you they have a small job and they want a small website bill and you'd be like oh yeah i learned to build websites in microsoft word you know they'll just be like no god please no 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 nobody wants to hear that you build a website in microsoft word they want to hear that you can build a website and you can put it up on the real internet and there are human beings who have built sites in google sites just for temporary things like a wedding registry um to collect donations for something all kind of stuff like that and i think at, at minimum you should be able to build a site like this then you can move on to like quicks.com and you can build professional websites with all sorts of things collecting email addresses and all kind of drama but yeah but yeah this is not me trying to um clown other teachers or whatnot but we come too far, it's 2021, for people in the Caribbean to be submitting our website in Microsoft Word. It really not a hard. It really not a hard. So I don't even I don't even agree with this being on the syllabus. Microsoft Word here. This should just be free online web services or Google Sites. But I understand that there are some places that don't have good internet and building it on the internet is difficult. So they build it locally on Microsoft Word. That's okay. I understand that. But if given the opportunity and the children could use our online way, let them do that now, man. Let them do that. That is the day, you know. Um, if you want to see how to build one on, um, on Wix.com, I have a next video for that. Link will be in the description and you can check that one out. But you see, building it in Google, um, Google Sites, easy does it. And you could go as hard as you want. You could go and add 
new layouts and you can add multiple pictures and you can make collapsible things you could even put in the form that you made from your um your fillable form if you want to register people so like it's so cool i'm gonna show you that quickly so let's say i add a new page and i name this page register and the name of the page is register of course it's going to come up on top there and i want to add in inside there a fillable form the exact same fillable form that we did because i showed you how to make the form in microsoft word and in fillable forms at google right it will literally link to your google account and you'll be able to find the form that you did this is the exact form that i did in the sample sample video click insert and now the exact same form that you would have created you could just insert it into here and that makes it even more coherent even though the SBA didn't ask for this you could just create a link to another page and put register and put in the exact form that you did in google forms i mean i mean why not why not and then when you click publish yeah got it and I could publish now i could go to the real site and now you're gonna see the real site has the form available would have the form available this video is brought to you by make it simple tt every class is structured to run on a yearly cycle from june to may this cycle covers the whole syllabus in 12 months with one two-hour session per week along with assignments that are given weekly every class is recorded so students can always go over the work and recap notes in case they miss a class to register, head over to our website at makeitsimplett.com forward slash register or you can WhatsApp one 308 8799 Yeah, now register is there. When I click register, look the form right here for me to fill out the information. And that's... That's real kick. Real kick. You really don't have to be too, too smart or too special to do that. And that's it, you know. That's the webpage design. So I've completed everything. Videos for these are up on the channel. Anybody that need help with the SBA, you could do these. So all of these videos will be the new videos that come up on in November. On do, do all the videos. So the long, long video that I had that was three hours long. I cut them down into smaller bite-sized videos that like about 45 minutes each. So that and shows different ways how to do the different parts of the SBA because um, the three hour long video helped enough people for the past few years but these newer ones they are more updated and I fixed some of the errors I probably made two or three years ago so that's it there for the website thank you very much for watching another make it simple SBA tutorial video um, I hope that it helped you. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the stuff that YouTubers normally say. And most of all, share it with your friends in school. So you can share it with your classmates. You can even share it with your teachers. Doesn't matter because we all try to get better at IT. So, see you in the next video because we make it simple.